When he was just 21 years old, Jay Shetty traded life in the corporate world for an ashram in India, living as a monk for three years. So, using the wisdom he learned, he then went on to become a best-selling author, podcaster and Hollywood's go-to life coach. And recently, he officiated at J-Lo and Ben Affleck's wedding. What a beautiful wedding. Now, Jay's new book, Eight Rules of Love, is a guide to improving your relationship, and he joins us now to tell us so more. So good to meet you, oh, isn't it? So good to meet you, finally. <laughs> I never dreamed that me. you'd be on our show. This is so you amazing. You love his podcast. I'm so, I'm so used to your voice, because I listen <laughs> to it all the time when I'm on the way to work and everything. It's called On Purpose. Great podcast, if you haven't seen it. You've got a beautiful voice. You've got a lovely... Oh, you're very you, kind. You speak to so many amazing, inspirational people. But you, let's start from the very beginning when you decided, I want to go and live like a monk. <laughs> and you did it for three years. Yeah. How was that experience for you? Yeah, so I, I'm born and raised in London, and so I never imagined I'd ever end up in an ashram in India. Yeah. And I'd love to go and hear from athletes and celebrities and musicians about their journey and the struggles they went through. And one of my friends once said to me, let's go listen to a monk speak. And I thought to myself, I don't know what I'm going to get out of that. And so I said to him, we'd only go if he promised me we'd go to a bar afterwards. <laughs> and my friend agreed, he said, sure. And I went to this event and just was so blown away because he was talking about how the goal of life was to use your gifts in the service of others. And that really affected me. And so I went and spent three years, you wake up at 4 a.m., you take cold showers, you sleep on the floor, you get two sets of clothes, you wear one, you wash one, all your possessions fit inside a gym locker. And so it's a really incredible experience. I'm really happy I did what it. What did you miss? Jay, when you was a monk. I mean, look at you there in that picture. What did you really miss? I missed chocolate. Yeah. I missed football. <laughs> and I missed some rap music. So like, those three years, three, you three never loves. had those things? Never, for three never. Years. Yeah, never. Was it hard to turn your back on being a monk? Like, when you had to sort of, when you went back into society, was it, was it quite a weird sort of time? That was probably the hardest point in my life. I feel like I experienced depression for the first time because I didn't know who the prime minister was. I didn't know who'd won the World Cup. I felt... Like you knew your vocation wasn't being a monk, totally. so you had to get back into society. Totally. But, you, yeah. but I'd forgotten how to do small right. talk. Like, I didn't even know how to have a conversation that wasn't deep and meaningful. So it took me quite a while to feel like I could get comfortable again. So then you thought, I'm going to live a life of service. You thought, podcasts, books. And now this is your second book. Yes. It's called Eight Rules of Love. Should we have a little... Yeah, should we, yeah, should we hold sure. it up? This is by Jay Show. This is your second book. It is. So what's the main... I mean, we don't, we're not going to go through the eight, but what's the, what's the main purpose? What's the, well, what's the main message? What I found when I was speaking to so many people, I was reading so many comments, I was looking at social media, and we're always creating videos and podcasts, and I just saw so many people were struggling. And so this book is, whether you're single and you just started dating, whether you've been in a relationship or you're married and you want to find that spark again, or whether you just got broken up and someone just broke your heart, this book is designed to help you navigate all of those transitions. Because the way we navigate those transitions lead to transformations. And so this book is hoping to be your friend, your guide, your coach through that journey. It's really taking what you've learned as a monk and, and yes. the way you look at life and how you prioritise and just b b putting it in, in, you know, how we would live in a Western world, I suppose. Yeah, exactly. Like, for me, everything I learned there... I was just picking up notes thinking, gosh, my friends in London could really benefit sure. from this. And I thought to myself, I need to do that. And so I take ancient wisdom, I pair it with modern science, and then I put in all these practical steps and strategies that any one of us could apply wherever we are. So give us some of these strategies. What is the secret to a healthy love? Something that is, like, enriches you inside out. What is the, the, the secret? Yeah, the secret is a lot simpler than we, we think. And it's three things. The first is we have to like the other person's personality. They have well, to like important. ours. That's obvious. <laughs> uh, the second one is really interesting. We have to respect each other's values. Often, we want our partner to value what we value. Yeah, yeah. But they can't. They They're value their own values. Yes, yeah, so we have to respect their values. They have to respect yeah. ours. And the third is we have to be committed to help them towards their goals. And they have to be committed to our, towards ours. Often, we want our partner to be our cheerleader. But we've got to be theirs as well. 100%. Oh, you've got it's to really interesting. I think sometimes, like, when you're with your partner, I think it's so important that you treat them like your best friend. Because they, yes. it's when you're with your best friend, like, you yeah. would never give your best friend sometimes the hard time you give your partner or vice oh, versa. Yeah. It's so important to remember that's your best mate. You have to. It's like with yourself as well. You have to be your best friend to yourself. Now, I know it sounds selfish, but you believe also we need to be comfortable with being with ourselves, don't we? Yeah, we have to get comfortable being alone, whether that's single or whether when you're in a relationship to spend time on your own. All the studies show that if you get into a relationship because you're scared of being alone, you actually make yeah, bad mistakes. So, so a lot of people end up getting into a relationship where they become more codependent, where they struggle to break up with that person, 
and they often settle for less than they deserve. Yeah. So we make bad decisions when we're scared of being lonely and end up with the wrong person. And losing the obsession with each other is a big thing, right? Yeah, exactly. I think one of the interesting things, and you were saying this earlier, like I think when you first meet someone, you get really obsessed and wrapped up in them. You do? But actually, the more you can create a healthy separation and a healthy balance, the more likely you are to know, well, what are they like when they're stressed? What are they like when they're tired? Learning about how someone is 360 is so much more important than that one hour at the bar where you had a drink. Yeah. That's an interview. You're not really seeing the real them. You're seeing the version they want you to see. And I think seeing yeah. someone when they're tired, when they're stressed, when they're exhausted, that's the reality of a relationship. Jay Shetty, you officiated <laughs> J-Lo's wedding. Tell me everything. <laughs> seeing you both sing the song was amazing earlier, by the way. That was, that was awesome. Tell me, what uh, was it like? It, it, was, it was absolutely beautiful, spectacular as you'd expect. But for me, officiating is really special because you get to see love up close. So you get to see the hands shaking, the lips quivering, you get to see tears down the eyes. And the whole time, I love loves and I love weddings. And so the whole time I was like, don't cry, don't, don't cry. cry. You can't mess up JLo's wedding. Don't cry, don't cry, don't cry. And so I held it together, which was the hardest part nice for me. Well, so nice to out. meet you. Give it this, can we get a guys. ding there? Because it needs a, oh my God, it's got a ham and ding. You know, you know you're, you're nailed now. I love that. Thank you both. Lovely to Thank meet you. Thank you so much thank for joining us. Thank you so much.